Today, I want to finish one thing that I started yesterday. I want to bring a practical example of how one-fifth saved the entire cosmos, the entire world. One-fifth principle saved the entire world from dying from hunger. Because this concept is conceived in heaven and we want to give an example. You know, courses like agriculture, so courses that are practical, you, you do theory, but you also do practical. You have a demonstration of farm. I want to see how the Lord demonstrates the one-fifth principle, which is a biblical concept being practiced in this world. And believe you me, it starts with the heaven nation, but ends with God glorified. Open with me now. You know the story. I don't want to bring the story again, but I want to start from there. You know the story of uh, the dream that the dreamer raised by God was the only one who could interpret. When that man, the king of Egypt, was sleeping, and most of us sleep, though some of us do not sleep. Then he had a dream. And as we said at that time, let me repeat again, he saw seven fat cows. Very fat. Fat. That even walking was a problem. Then, after a while, he saw seven very thin and ugly looking. And then, to his amazement, the thin one swallowed the thick, the fat, the good-looking one. And they remained thin. Then the story, the dream was repeated again with the wheat. And again, seven ones. Good, looking, shiny. And then the th thin ones, ugly ones, swallows them again. And they remain looking ugly. By the way, in that story, if I don't want to make my commentary... It teaches us many things. Of course, there are some things that when they swallow good ones, they remain ugly. Go with me now. When the king could not sleep, he looked for an interpreter. And the advice when Joseph was brought to him, and I want now to turn to the Bible for now, in the book of uh, Genesis 41, kindly open your Bible now. It's good to open your Bibles. Let's open our Bibles, wherever you are. I'm very glad with some people who have been very consistent. I'm looking at them. They have been very consistent. I pray that the Lord will sustain that consistency. We have two more days to go. 41, verse 33. The advice was given. And the advice was, this do not need any other human being. There are some qualifications that were needed here. I don't know how many will have these qualifications so that you can get this job. The qualifications were, now therefore, let Pharaoh select a discerning and a wise man. A discerning and a wise man. You know, God is looking for people who are wise, who understand where we are going, who understand the happening of this world, who will be able to, to not only be wise, but put that wisdom to interpret the times that we live in, like men of Issachar. So that was the qualification. Look for somebody wise, who can be able not only to interpret the dream, but to put it into practice. And I'm glad when men were looked around, the king made the following confession. 4138, it says, And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? Why do you want us to look for who? There is only one man with the Spirit of God. It is him who can give us the answer. You know, many times people think that God do not have the answer to this world. Sometimes people think that those who God has called may not have the solution to this world. 
People think there are other people who are solutions. But I want to let you know that those who know, it is only God who has an answer and solution to this world because it was there yesterday, it's there today, and forever. Today, I, I met one friend. The time that I used to meet with him, he was a young man. And now I met him, he's a big man and looking old. You know, things change. We are here today, tomorrow we are not there. But the person who was there yesterday and remained the same today and remained the same in future is only one person. We, we change. Even our body, even our hair, even our earnings, even our education change. We continually change. And then it comes a time we go down. But there is only one person who never changes. Jesus never changed. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And those who have the spirit of God said, who can we find? This one has the spirit of God in it. How I pray that in this church of victory, God will look for a woman or a man, a young man or an old man who is wise and have understanding, who the spirit of God can reside, who will be able not only to hear, but be able to put to practice what God wants us to do as we live in this sinful world. I pray that God will look for one person. At least one. It was only one person who would turn the tide and let people understand how they need to behave and how they need to walk. So that man was chosen. So what was the advice? The advice of this young wise man was this. Now I want somebody to read this one. Genesis 41, 34. What was this advice? Read 34. You can read 35 to 36. I don't have a problem. Genesis 41, 34 to 36. You hear how the wise people talk. Can you read it? The word says... Take up what? Yes. Now, I, I thank God. <clears throat> There's something that I want us to understand. God is the only one who knows things before they happen. And can adequately predict what's going to happen. That time, there is no plenty of years have not come. Famine have not come. It's just a dream. But God is the only person who knows the future and read it accurately and can give us ways of which we can use to survive. I met another young man yesterday evening and he told me that what he remembers when we got, and that was a long time, then we talked about the frugality from the word frugal approach. He could still remember that. You know, there are things that you can get them as a principle, they never get old or weary. They, they remain. You can change, we can change, but the principles of God remain the same. Today, I'm a little bit excited because I want to bring to you what God says before it happens, how it happens, and how it saves the entire world. And then what can we learn from it by the time I'm done? So he told them, Listen to what he told them. Number one, there will be years of plenty. Do you know in life, there's a time when you have it full, when you have the title, when you have the looks, when you have the money, when you have... Those who listened to Atuli not long ago, I don't know whether I, mean, I was able to get that one. Atuli said, you come to me when I still have what? When I still have money. You don't have money forever. The time will come when I don't have money. So come now when I still have it. You know, in this world, all the things that we have are for just a time. You didn't get me, I repeat. The titles we have, 
The cars we have, the monies we have, those things are very temporary. A time comes when they are not there. So when you have them, learn how to use them well. When you have them, let them not use you, but use them. When you have them, know that there is something called future. And so he was told the second thing. I want you to do this. Keep a fifth. And a fifth is how many percent? A fifth is how many percent? One over five. It's 20 percent. Keep 20 percent, not with yourself, because you, you cannot keep it. Take it from them. Let them be under Pharaoh. Let it be under the, the ruler, the king. Because if it remains in your hand, they will not last long. There are many things that when they are in our hands, yes, they are there, but they cannot stay forever. So he was told, I know who you are. When I give you 100%, you will not keep them. So take a fifth, keep them with the Pharaoh. Every year. For how many years? For seven years. My friends, there are things that are safe with us and there are things that are never safe with us let me say this one i can say authoritatively that it was demonstrated then that people can live on 80 percent at least it was it was taken by the edict of the king they were able to take a fifth that means 20% was taken away from them. So you don't, don't, don't bring this as you that, you know, when you tithe, then you cannot. You can still get tithes and offerings and still be able to live. It was the Mosaic here. For those seven years, they were able to be deducted how many percent? And they were able to eat and live. So don't bring this idea that, you know, you see, I have this button, I have this one, I have school fees, I have what, you, you, you have that one, but you can still live. And even those who, budget guru says, you can even save up to 20% out of your normal income, which is for saving. But now don't save it in the bank. Don't save it at home. Save it with God. Give it to the king, not King Pharaoh, but the king of kings. Give him. Let that come from your hand to be stored as an inheritance with who? With God. And many of us struggle to surrender things into the hand of God. They can have, uh, surrender it to, to the banks. They can surrender it to other things. But when it comes to giving it to God, they find, they think, this may not be practical. I want you to see here, it was practical. It was demonstrated in the first book of the Bible. That you can have the 80% and live on it, but the one I will come here that will save the entire people is not the 80%. Is that one given in whose hands? It depends on whose hand. It depends on whose hand. You have read that, that poem of whose hand? Hmm? It depends on whose hand. You commit yourself, or you commit your things, you commit your whatever. It depends on whose hands. And this today, Joseph is teaching Egyptians that things are safe with the king. It can be small, but it's safe with the king. Now, let me start climbing now. After the seven years that was talked to came, Pharaoh implemented the one-fifth principle, which he got from who? Let me ask from there. Let me ask before I continue preaching. This idea, Pharaoh got it from who? And Joseph got it from who? So who was really giving this, this issue up? Is the one who started the dream. Who made the king to look for Joseph? So this idea of one fifth comes not from the church, not from the pastors. It comes from who? From God, who wants to save us for a future. Because he knows most of us live for here and now. If I was talking to young girls, and I'm seeing some here, including my only daughter that I have, if I would talk to them, I would tell them, 
Really, if you want to secure the future of a boyfriend, don't allow him to know you now. When he knows you now, you have blown it all. He will not respect you. But some of them think that it is now and here. And they blow it away. Now, I've seen some people don't like me for what I've just said, but it's the truth. Now, I want you to see something. And this is the most important text that I want you to understand. Genesis 41, 53. I want somebody to read it because I don't want to read it. If I read it, you may say I have some things in mind. Genesis 41. 53. I'm also looking so that we read together, but you are the one reading. Me, I'm only re looking at it. The seven years of abundance in Egypt came to an end. And the seven years of famine began just as Joseph had said. <laughs> there was famine in all the other lands, but in the whole, of, the whole land of Egypt, there was food. Just live here. Now, I don't know what to do. Sometimes we preachers do not understand, but if of time I would have jumped and rolled down. Two things are critical. Let me read it, and I'll tell you what I want to see is critical. Then the seven years of plenty which were in the land of Egypt ended. My friend, things end in this world. Believe you me, now you may not understand, but let me tell you today, things end, chaos end, titles end, whatever you have end, there are time comes when those even in your life comes to an end. Let me repeat it briefly. You will not understand me. The years of plenty comes to an end in one way or the other and it will come. The time you still have authority, that's when you talk, people run and cough and do the other. That time will come when it will end. Believe you me, when God says the sun, this world was going to come to an end, it is true. He was told to Joseph. And Joseph told to the Egyptian before it happened. And that seven years came to an end. It will always come to an end. Ata ujanja wako unafanya, it will come to an end. You some of us think they are so clever, they know better than that one will come to an end one day. It will come to an end. Things end in this world. The only place where things do not end is the world that we are preparing you for. This world they end. Mugak. Sai, okay, vitu, many things happen. A time will come at okay, people is just paper, nothing happens. A corner power. Now, when you, you sign things, things happen. But a time will come when you are the same person with the same pen and pe pe now, even if you sign a million things, nothing happens. My friends, things come to an end. The time of plenty will come to an end. When you still have it, yes, have it. When you still enjoy it, yes, enjoy it. But please know at the back of your mind that it will come to end. And it will surely end. Write that one down today, I've said. You know, there's something with the ladies, all of them, even those ugly ones. We call them Rainbow, Jaber. And every lady wants to be called that way. Even the ugly ones are called what? Jaber. Sivo. Murembo. I want to tell you there are things in this world that come to an end. So if you're not prepared, some people, when they end, when you are not prepared, it will happen. We are going to read here what happens to those that they found not prepared. You will see what happens when things come to an end, when good times come to an end. And this really will come to an end.
How do you behave in the time of plenty? How do you behave when you still have things in your hand which is put by God? How do you behave when you still have authority in your hand? How do you handle it? Because it will surely come to an end. It will. Time may not allow me, but I have told you things end. Now, there's something, before I go to other things, that surprised me. You know, there were people who sold somebody to Egypt. There were people who had 100%. When they, the king was keeping a fifth day, they had 100. They were eating time of plenty. They were eating and dancing and, and partying and things were okay. And, but they didn't know that after the seven years, you see what happened. Immediately the seven years end, those 100% that they have also ended. And now, read this one. Genesis 42, verse 1 to 3. It's a text that is worth. It is also in 43, verse 1 to 2. But at least, let only read 42, verse 1 to 3. Chapter 42, verse 1 to 3. Can somebody read? No, there's one that allow you to read. Can somebody read? When, when Jacob learned that there was grain in Egypt... He said to his sons, why do you just keep looking at each other? He continued, I've heard that there is grain in Egypt. Hmm. Go down there and buy some for us so that we may live and, and not, not die. die. Then, the ten, um, then ten of Jacob's brothers went down to buy grain from Egypt. Do you know why they look at each other? Do you know why they're looking at each other? That's not the main topic. I would have speaked on it. Do you know why they're looking at each other when they're told to go to Egypt? They knew what they have done. There's somebody that sent in Egypt. They knew that it's according to the father that this one was dead. But that one was alive. They didn't know. They said, now, Egypt? <laughs> there is where those traders went. So how do we go there? We never know whether we may encounter that man. We have She's told our father is dead. Let me explain something. That is, by the way, let me say something here. Do you see who, what took them to Egypt? What, what took them to Egypt? Eh? Famine, not grain. You know, there's some of us that it needs a famine to wake them up. There's some of us that you need some famine to come into their life for them to wake up. But you see, how much percent when in time of plenty they had? Now that they are saying less they die. What, how many did they have? Just talk to me. How many did they have? What percent did they have of the, of the food that was there during the time of plenty? 100%. But immediately they ended the 100%. And because in your hand, anything put there is not that safe. It will not save you in the future. It cannot save you now. What is given in the hand of God will save you then. So the hundred got finished. Now, what is it that everybody was coming to for? The one fifth that was kept with Pharaoh. The whole world, and I like that one. You will read that one in the Bible. The whole world were now streaming where? For the one fifth that was kept with Pharaoh. The 80% in their hand, the 100% in their hand, psh, the hundred percent in their hand psh. my friends, may I propose it to you? What you are slighting and not putting in God's hand, you may put them in, in equities, in banks, in, in investments, you can put them there, and you know that they are safe. They will be safe, but not safe enough. When life, when means are given in the hands of God, they are safe. When our children, when our lives are placed into the hand of the creator, there they are safe. Not in the hand of government. I saw how people were excited when Uru was campaigning today for Raila. But even in the hands of Raila, or in the hands of Uru, you think we are safe. 
Nobody will die. No wife will be beaten. But in the hands of God, we are. Please believe you me. I want to point to you today from this story. There is a hand where we are safe, where our earnings are safe, where our lives are safe, where our foods are safe, our wives are safe, our children are safe, our lives are safe. Only in the hand of the king of kings. Not in the hands of education. Now let's see what happened, even in Egypt. Now I want you to take me, take, go with you this uh, path. But read with me verse 56 and 57. 51, read for me with the verse, uh, verses 56 and 57. It from 41? Not from 41, verse 56 and 57. Or 41? Okay. When, when the famine had spread over the whole country. Oh. Mm -hmm. Continue reading. Joseph opened the storehouses and sold grain to the Egyptians. For the famine was severe throughout Egypt. And all the countries came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph because the famine was severe in all the world. So all over. Now every road was leading to where? Because of what? I'm just talking to you because of famine. But what was there now being found in Egypt which was not there? Famine is everywhere but not in what? In Egypt. They were going there. Now, I want you to see briefly, I want good readers now, and this one is going to be hard. 47.13, now let's start hard ones now. James 47.13, somebody who read, let me go over them briefly how things were happening. 47.13, yes. there was no food, however, in the whole region because the famine was severe. Both Egypt and Canaan wasted away because of the famine. So here now? So even then you found the whole world, there's no bread anywhere. Things have failed. Now people started using what they have. They had money. Those who have money, listen to me now. In, in verse 15 and 16, read. What will happen then? Read. When the money of the people of Egypt and Canaan was gone, all Egypt came to Joseph and said, Give us food. Why should we die before your eyes? Our money is used up. I like the New King James. So when the money failed in the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, Give us bread. For why should we die in your presence? For the money has failed. Please know that money fails. Please know that when it comes to that, money fails. Those who have them. I want you to know money fails. Somebody need to listen to me now. Yes, now you have it. But it will fail you because money cannot save you. And it didn't save them. They used all their money. Sometimes when you don't put things in God's hand, you use that all your money and other things, sometimes in sickness, sometimes in other things, until all of them come to finish. Like the woman who was bleeding, he tried all the doctors and they drained her dry. And after that, it only when he came to Christ, she came to Christ, that she was healed. Some of us, when we are moneyed, we are so busy for God. Because we think money will save us, but money will fail in one way or the other. Verse 18 to 20. 47 verse, verse 18, 18 to 20. 18, 18 mm. to 20. Yes. When that year was over, mm. they came to him the following year and said, We cannot hide from our Lord. The fact that since our money is gone and our livestock belongs to you, there is nothing left for our land, our, for our Lord, except our bodies 
and our land. You have read up to verse uh, 20? You have not? Not yet, not yet. Mm -hmm. Why, Why should we perish? Because your eyes, uh, we and our land as well, buy us and our land in exchange for food. Mm. And we with our land will be in bondage to Pharaoh. Give us a seed that, so that we may live and not die, and that the land may not be uh, become desolate. So Joseph bought all the land in Egypt for Pharaoh, uh, for Pharaoh, the Egyptians won, and all, and all sold their fields because the famine was so severe for them. The land became Pharaoh's, and Joseph reduced the people to servitude from one end of Egypt to the other. Now, I want you to understand one thing. After money, what was the next thing that they had? There are two things that were there. What were they? There was livestock and land. Yeah, I come from where livestock is important. But even that cannot save somebody. Yes, people have land here, title deeds and title deeds. I know. But there will come a time when those things, money, livestock, land, cannot save. So people say, now we are offering all those land and all everything to you because why do we keep them when we are dying? There are some things that, yes, we keep them, they cannot save us. And that's why when sickness comes, people sell them. Sell the land, sell whatever, blah, 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 blah. So it goes on. Because those do not have life. Allow me, because of time, to read what happened and then the principle at the end of it. Now, read slowly. Read slowly. Of oh, verse 24, 25, and then 26. Then I think I'm ready to conclude. But when the crop comes in, Give a fifth of it to Pharaoh. The other Just start from verse 23 so that we get it. Verse 23. From 23. Uh. Joseph said to the people, Now that I have bought you and your land today for Pharaoh, here is a seed for you uh, so you can plant the ground. Mm. But when the crop comes in, give a fifth of it to Pharaoh. The other four fifths you may keep as the, as the seed for the fields, as uh, food for yourselves and your households and your children. So, verse 25. You have saved our lives, they said. May we find favor in the eyes of our Lord. We will be in bondage to Pharaoh. Then the principle that never... Where's 26? So Joseph established. Uh, and if you have a pen, you can underline verse 26. Can read. And so? So Joseph established as a law concerning land in Egypt, still in force today, that a fifth of the produce belongs hmm. to Pharaoh. It was only the land of the priests that it did not become pharaohs. I don't know what more I would want to let you know. The things left in the hand of man will finally fail and not sustain. And when they came to the king, when they had what saved the entire world from dying was a fifth that was kept with Pharaoh. What will save people in the new world, is not what is in our hands, is what we have kept with the Lord. My friend, let me submit. When I read these things, I almost said, Eureka, Eureka, I found it. When I discovered it here, I said, that was in Egypt to date, that a fifth of all things belongs to what? Because they were saved from dying. And yet there's somebody who has saved us from the power 
of sin have saved us and snatched us from death and deformation of sin. There's one who offered his blood, not just grain, so that you and me will live forever. And those who stole their life with him, fraternity, that's why he tells them, you will always bring to me as a sign that you, everything of course belongs to me, but you own a fifth. That's why we have the tithe and the offering. That's why we have the donkey principle. A load ten, a load ten here. Two sacks, two sacks this side. A balanced approach to life. My friends, time may not allow me. But let you know this today. That the Lord we serve knows. There's a song in Lua. I don't know whether it's there in English. But it's, I like what it says. In migeno chamo gikeni. And gikeni are the things you have stored. It was the food stored that not only helped during famine, but was a seed that will continue to sustain the entire world. Do you know that when we become faithful to God and give a fifth, whether a tithe and offering, we are also keeping a seed that will help us in the time of want. Because in this world, when we keep things there, there are three things that always work on those things we keep. Number one, the Bible says them. Do not keep where what? What? Let's tackle moth. What do moth work on? Moth work on all organic things, all our clothes. You may wear them today and they... And I found something with, with clothes. Let me talk of men. You know, with the clothing industry, apart from that, they get old. They play with only three areas. The buttons. So you only go there to buy buttons. Three buttons, two buttons, one button. That's the, they play with the buttons. Or what? After playing with the buttons is the cut. One cut, no cut, two cut. So that's what you continue changing. You continue chasing them, but they never remain the same. And then the flap. They put it either this way or they put it this way, whatever. They continue changing that one. But even if they don't change it, when you buy it, it will either get worn or get old or you overgrow it because the organic things are susceptible to the moth. They destroy them. And we have a lot of clothes. We have a lot of things that are organic. We keep them in food. You can buy them. Then why do they get rotten? Why? Do do works on them. Then the second thing said, which are our things are what? Rust. Those who are metallic or inorganic things. Yes. The metals, and I've seen several metals now here. Those metals will rust. Those metals will age. Sometimes those metals will kill us. And we can keep those metals. Some people want metal everywhere. Metal on their nose, metal on their watch. Everywhere they want to put metals. Metal in their ears, metal everywhere. I don't know whether they want to be metallic. I don't know whether we want to be receivers so that I don't know what we receive with those all metals around us. I've seen people putting metals here, metals every, until now. You, you, even a disc receiver is, is far better. I don't, you understand? People, but you see, those things rust and wear out. What are the other things? Robbers go for precious things, the gold. The money, the other things, they want them. Sometimes when they come, they can even take your life. But it says keep it in heaven. Where those three do not act. Where thieves don't reach. Where moth and rust do not reach. My friends, I propose to you today. Do you not only return tithe and offering for the sake of the future, but give your life to him who can sustain it, who can keep it for eternity? Because when this world comes to an end, there's a world that never comes to an end. And that's why our theme song was telling us, when we all go to heaven, what a day will it be? My friends, what is it keeping you from giving your life and the means to the cause of God? What is it? What is it? I'm just asking slowly. 
What is it that keeps you from giving your life to Christ? What is it that you think you can keep in your hand and be safe? What is it that you can keep in the safe and be safe? Or in the hands of a man? I pray that you who are listening to me, whether now or online, please listen to me. The fifth principle is all about storing for eternity. Not for now. And you know, the Bible closes by saying, and this one I will read. I will not tell you where it is. But if you know it, you will tell me, no, I'll open it. This one I want to read. And this will be my closing text. I'm looking for it slowly in my Bible. The Lord has brought it in my mind as I was about to close. And I said, this must be read. So I look for it. I look it gently. I'm there. Those who are wise, those who are wise, shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. I repeat. Let me repeat that text. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. My friends, the issue of stewardship, of tithe and offering, is not on paying pastors and doing things. It's preparing people, turning them for eternal life, storing their life with Christ, where they will be there forever and ever, where there will be no more separation, where there will be no more sickness. The issue of stewardship is not to enrich people but to prepare you to store things and your life, beginning with your life, where they can never be reached by moth, rust, or robbers. Not only to save those in Egypt, but to save the whole world to know the truth. For once you know the truth, it will set you free, but your life will be hid with Christ in heavenly places. How many people are saying, Pastor, I yield. Now that I'm still alive, I want to make the choice to deposit my life with Christ and allow him to lead my life. If you're there, I want to see you, see you stand. I also want to ask you, if you've been struggling with 10%, tithe and even offerings please know it it is safe in the hand of God not in the bank not in your pocket not in your investments it is safe in the hand of God so I have two prayers those who want to commit their life to Christ that's my first prayer I'll see your hand as I pray Father I thank you we want to deposit our lives, our family members, our beloved ones into the hand that is safe, the only safe place, that you will watch over our life, over our family, over our business, over everything that we do. Lord, we commit them into the hand that we have known to be safe and secure. Lord, I pray that we will not struggle with you, but surrender into your hand. Let not famine drive us. Let us our own choice and will drive us to your hand. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the last part of the prayer. You have not been faithful in returning tithe. And you want to be faithful because you want to trust your means with God. Then with also the people also want to say, you have been faithful, but you said, Pastor, I want the Lord to sustain my faithfulness in all the years until he comes. Let me see your hand. Father, those hands are the hands of a covenant with you. Keep us faithful. Let's not argue with you. You know better. May members who have raised their hand, including myself, purpose in our life to deposit our tithes and our offerings and our lives with you for eternity. Take us, receive us, we pray 
in Jesus' name.